Welcome back to Sailing Catalpa. We've got something very interesting happening here this afternoon. Guys, set the scene. We're out sailing. We're about to cross an ocean. Something's brewing. We can see it on the horizon and it's not going to be good. 35 knots of wind, bit of a storm, bit of a squall, and you're relying on your rig. And your rig's up top going like this. <laughs> this is what it's like when you're at sea and the boat's rocking and it's going like this. Been through a storm in the boat yard and have a look at that. Are you telling me that chain plate was going to hold on for much longer? That's just me putting a little bit of leverage on it. Imagine your mast up top when it's swaying back and forth in 30 knots plus a wind. In all honesty, if you pulled your chain plates out and they looked like that, would take your family across the ocean? I don't think so. I think in this case, Shafe has probably saved our lives. Have a bloody look at that. How good do you feel now about replacing your chain plates? Oh, feel bloody good. Let's go get into it. Because we've got to go watch the video now. Let's go install these chain plates. Okay. We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode. Yes, we are back in the boatyard. We just got back to Catalpa. We've seen our kitties. It was good timing because Chuck just got here and he's brought down our chain plates, our new furler, lots of stuff. So we're super grateful. Thank you, Chuck. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And they're just getting the chain plates out right now. I think your hair's giving you superpowers, honey. Show us your face today. <laughs> This is day five and there's a little bit of swelling and it's moving down his face. Yeah. He's still, you're still super handsome, babe. Don't feel it, but anyway. <laughs> I can barely see, <laughs> can barely open his eyes, but we made it back safely. Kids are happy to see us, right? Yeah. <laughs> we had an incredible time away, but it was nice to be back with Taj and Bella and of course, Moritai. Last night, Dad pulled apart the sander and fixed it. I'm going to be able to continue sanding the room and hopefully be done with it today or tomorrow. And we are getting ready to finish our final projects, which is very exciting. Today we're going outside to open up something that arrived while we are away. We're really, really excited to see them. It's our chain plates from Schaefer Marine. We've got a few jobs to do before the rig goes up, like put the chain plates back in. We're actually going to recoat our deck and put some kiwi grip on the deck. So that's exciting. And I'm just gonna make a mud water before we go outside. Yes, we still drink mud water. We love mud water. That's how we start our day every day. We actually forgot to take mud water when we went away, which we were absolutely so bummed about. So we're so excited to have our mud water back. Yesterday, Lee and I put some wires through the mast. We're going to wire up some of our Alumatec lights as well. There's a few things to go back on the mast as well before um, we put the, or put, put, put the rigging back on. Shade from Marine is sending us new pins for our rigging. So they are going to arrive in about three days. And then we'll have to go to Phoenix to get them. And then we should be, fingers crossed, we should be all prepped. And then we'll be able to put our rigging back on. So... There's so much happening and we're so close to getting back in the water. If you haven't tried mud water yet and you want to, the link is on the screen or in the description down below. Go check them out. They're absolutely amazing. The company is amazing. The people that work there are amazing and we, we love them. So go and support mud water. And you can support us by clicking the link. So good. Everyone needs mud water in their life. Even the cameraman? Even the cameraman can have a mud water. It doesn't just taste amazing, it's really good for you and it makes you feel good. And that's what we're all about. Oh, Talpa. cheers darling. We're all about the feeling good. So here's to another great day in the boatyard, honey. Let's roll. Let's get back in the water. 
nearly ready team we're nearly ready we're just getting through the last of the projects and we're so close so hang in there guys please stay with us we're nearly back out adventuring inside this box probably one of the most overlooked items on a sailing vessel Open this. it's making me work to get these out though Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. These are our new chain plates. So let me give you an idea of what our old ones look like. There is a before and after. I did contemplate making these myself. Uh, I was gonna use a grinder and sanding and all the rest of it and just get some stock plate. And it's possible, you can do it that way. It's not gonna be anything like what you can get from these guys. As an important part of the boat as it is, we chose to use Schaefer. I'm going to take you over to their factory. Let's have a look at how they cut these out and how they're all done. At Schaefer Marine, they use a water jet machine to cut out our stainless steel chain plates. They use 316L, which is chosen for its high chromium content, which reduces rust over time. Hence, a longer lasting chain plate. Water jet machines are a precise method that can create accurate, internal cuts and improve the quality of cut edges. It is a cold cutting process which is highly beneficial for cutting stainless steel as heat can have an effect on the integrity of the steel. Well, it uses a pump that pressurizes water and delivers it to the cutting head. The water passes through a small orifice in the cutting head, which is usually made up of a hard jewel, like a diamond, ruby, or sapphire. Bloody ripper of a packaging job here. If every company packaged their stuff like that, you'd never have anything damaged. They can make custom to whatever you need. For example, oh, it's got one in the finger, staple. So this was a custom plate for the stay, for the inner stay that was made up. That's how it was, and that's how I sent it to them, and that's how they returned it. So nice to finish on that. Beautifully done. For our running, or for our backstays, they were all angled. Have a look at that. Apart from my blood on there, on the staple. Have a look at that, that is beautifully done. Look at that. For me, it's so much easier just to send your plates to them and they can just mirror them on what they are. Because when you go to reinstall them, the way you pull them apart is the way they'll go back in. If you're five mil out, it means epoxying, drilling holes, doing all that sort of stuff. I'm scared of these staples now, I just got bitten. Once bitten, twice shy, they say. I can see myself in there, look at that. I see the camera lady there. Schaefer Marine did size these up a little bit to whatever, I can't remember the measurements of them, but they did offer to make them slightly larger. There's a lot to be said with chain plates. Some people say replace them every 10 years when you do your rigging. I don't think of this caliber that's gonna be necessary. I would say these original chain plates we had that are rotten by far, by all means they are shot in my eyes i would say they're 40 years old if you have the option to have these made professionally like this in my eyes it's a no-brainer they're just they're spot on no sharp edges highly polished everything correctly done you know i'm a diyer and for me to get anything close to this it's just not it's not achievable because you don't have the equipment these guys have it's not the fact that you can't do it as a diy it's the equipment that they use from water cutters to media polishing machines they drop these things in big barrels of media and, and there's the result they do a spot-on job they can bend it weld it quality in these is 10 out of 10 if you're looking at doing your chain plates and it's an option for you to get someone like Schaefer Marine to do these you're going to be happy and end up with quality job. To give you guys a bit more of an understanding how this all works. The danger zone was through here where the moisture is trapped in, there's lack of oxygen, and that's a whole nother topic on how stainless steel is affected. I won't go into that but just to let you know it is affected and our chain plates are all cracked around here. These could be 40 years old, who knows, they could be 20 years old. If we look at our new chain plate, the deck plate there, the chain plate enters the deck, all this is below deck, fastened with brand new stainless steel bolts. And now our rigging is attached to this, and our rigging is going to be attached with a hammer turnbuckle. So when you see a boat, that's how generally the rigging is attached. So you're relying on this whole section here to hold your mast up. If this lets go, your mast can potentially come down and be demasted at sea. 
generally your mast isn't going to come down in 10 to 15 knots on a beautiful sunny day cruising along the Mediterranean. It happens when you're in 25 to 35 plus knots of wind. There's a lot of pressure on your rig and when you don't want it to break, you lose your chain plate. So we have quality at the base where it starts. It's the foundation of your rigging guys and it's the one that is mostly overlooked. You can put a brand new shiny rig on but if you've got a crack in your chain plate below here like we did on a number of our chain plates you're only as good as your weakest link. For us we've chosen to use Hammer Marine as our rig which we used on our first boat and we've seen nearly 10 years out of that rigging which is generally the life of a rig for insurance purposes especially and we've chosen Schaefer Marine to to make our custom brand new chain plates which we are over the moon with and until they're installed probably just use them as a mirror they're that highly polished so what are your thoughts darling i uh, can't buy you any jewelry at the moment it's not in the budget but the closest thing i can give you is something that looks like jewelry as much as boat things don't excite me the more and more and more that we do in this reef it, stuff like this really does excite me because it I know that because of having these and because of replacing our old ones, it's not going to limit us on our travels. We're going to be able to travel all over the world and go anywhere because we're going to have the confidence in our boat. And that is a massive thank you to Schaefer Marine. You guys really have helped us out so much more than you'll ever know. The team is amazing to work with. Steve, who I talk to all the time, is an absolute legend and I just I can't thank you enough. He actually feels a little bit connected to the Pearson boats because the factory is down the road from where he grew up. He remembers seeing this exact boat getting built when he was a kid. And the boat has all, I think Lee said earlier, it has all Schaefer Marine gear on it and I think it's all original stuff. It just shows you the quality. They got, these guys have been in the industry a very, very long time and they are very professional and absolutely incredible. Working with them has just been an absolute pleasure and we're so grateful for everything. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. I can't wait to install this and get out of here and go back to our travels. The combination with Schaefer Marine chain plates and Hammer Marine rigging, we are beyond grateful for these companies that have put their trust in us and believe in our journey and believe in what we're doing. It's going to be not long at all and we're going to be back on the ocean, back doing what we love and it is a thank you to Schaefer Marine and Hammer Marine and a lot of other companies as well that have supported us and also our patrons. Guys, I know that you all have just made such an impact on our lives which I hope we can return the favour by sharing all these awesome adventures to come. So thank you for watching. Let's get into this deck. Let's get back out there and back in the water. Our deck had a few spots that had to be fixed from where we either removed something or it had been damaged or there was some spider cracking in the gel coat. It was also getting quite slippery so for safety reasons we were painting the deck with Kiwi Grip. Meanwhile, Bella was on to varnishing her room. She is using Total Boat Halcyon Varnish, which we love as it gives an awesome finish. You can also continue to re-coat every hour without sanding in between, which saves you a lot of time. And it's also not toxic smelling, which is a huge bonus. Thanks so much, Total Boat. Okay, Bella's room's going back together today. 
we've had one little snag because the captain made a bit of a boo-boo. What'd you do, honey? Sometimes I do fuck up. I thought it'd be a great idea when I had the chain plates removed just to clean the holes up with the die grinder and check for rot. But what I forgot about was that I'd run three brand new wires across here, two to my pedal and one for the navigation lights. And I touched the die grinder on the cable. And a good friend of ours, Brian, which was an electrical engineer, he said, as long as you keep the smoke inside the cables, it's all good. But I think I just let it out. Yeah, I'm going to have to have a look here. I made a bit of a mess. I'll give you a quick look. What a pain in the bum, because it's a locker, so there is moisture, and I do have to do a good job here. Look at your hair, babes. Look at your braids, it's so pretty. Motai. Okay, darling, on the table. Motai, we said to behave if you're going to be in here. That is not behaving. Not behaving. Just nicked that with the die grinder, brand new cable. I'm just gonna open that up and put a splice on there and a uh, heat shrink splice so it's uh, nice and watertight. So. How's the wood in this room? Your room looks amazing. Some new terminals on. These terminals actually go onto our chain plates and ground it all. As you can see, they are completely shot. And I've put some new ones on and I've put some heat shrink over it. The cable is actually okay, surprisingly enough. This one was absolutely shot and just left raw. There's moisture in here, it's an it's an anchor locker, so anything in there, either use heat shrink terminals or heat shrink over it, so everything's sealed. Because uh, it's definitely a moist area in the boat. Get out of there. Up there. Been vanished. How do you like Bella's varnishing job, Motai? It looks nice, isn't it? She did a good job, didn't she? What do you reckon, Motai? Got the nicest room on the boat now. I think there might be a screw up there. <laughs> What's that missing screw, Bella? Why have I found, found it? it? You find a new little place to sit, Maritai? What? Oh, if only we had the new vinyl. It would be so nice. We went and looked at a shop yesterday. It's a little more expensive, and Bella's not completely sold on the colour. Today's task is going to be replacing our old fluorescent lights, which they're not too bad efficiently wise. They're probably the incandescent lights obviously are worse. These are better, but there is one thing that is even better. So what we're going to be installing today is the Lumitec dome lights. These are a touch dome, pretty much touch them on, touch them off. They're dimmable, they have a red light for night work, for sailing of a night, you can run all your lights red. I think is an absolute must, just for night sailing, uh, you're not blinded, you can leave your lights on, uh, especially if there's light reflecting back up through your companion way. Uh, the last thing you want is light in your face, so you do want a red light, so red and white's ideal. We like to be as efficient as we can. If you're on a 12 volt system, you're running 410 milliamps. So you're not even drawing one amp of power with these lights. These are just a two wire setup like these. So what we're gonna do, for starters, we'll just turn that off, we'll remove this one. These just connect here, blade terminals. I wire this different. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna change it now, but this has two female terminals up here. If I was to do a new install, I'd do female male. Reason for that is the orientation of your negative and positive can't be incorrectly put on. I can see by the red and the black which is positive and negative. You could even get a voltmeter and check that just to make sure because you don't know who's done wiring and I've seen things back to front, I've seen different colours. The ideal way would be to have male, female and orientate them with your positive and negative and then you can't actually put it together the wrong way. In this case you could, but I can see the red and black, so there's going to be no problem there. So you are going to have to supply yourself with whatever fitting you want to fasten these to your boat. In this case, I'm going to grab a couple of blade terminals. So I know these are two females, so I've got two males that are going to here. Make sure they're secure. 
Obviously if these lights are in the cockpit and they're outside and you wanted an even more watertight finish you could actually put that on there and then that's a heat shrink terminal and you could heat shrink that on so it's completely sealed. But we're inside so that's not necessary. Negative positive, I'm going to feed those back up into here. I usually do the last bit just by hand so I don't over tighten anything. They're only small screws. If you press them once and they come on nice and bright, you just press them again and they'll turn themselves off to the other side of it. You press that, you've got your red light. And we're putting them not only in Bella's room but we have them in our bathrooms. We've got more to put up in the cockpit and out and replace our other lights because we want to make our boat as power efficient as possible. As you know, we are off grid most of the time, so that means we have to create our own energy. We get most of our power from the sun through our solar panels, so we like to be as efficient as possible so that we can stay out and go adventuring as long as possible. Little things make a really big difference when you are on a boat, living on a boat, and this is one of them. It's time to put my room back together, and I'm so happy I'm finally done. So we are just sorting out our chain plates. Very exciting. We're about to install our chain plates. So we've got to work out. we got all our bolts. What else are we doing there, Captain? Just seeing what we got. I was just having a bit of a look over of all our turnbuckles and holes and matching everything up. Everything seems good. We're just one one toggle bit short, actually. It's for the furler. I haven't looked at that yet, but that's no biggie. We can sort that out. So we're making sure we've got all our bits, but chain plates are going in today. So the foundation for our rig is going to be installed. We'll get our deck done and then you know what's coming. Last will be back on before we know it and we'll be back in the water. So let's just go through the process, honey. What's going to happen? Well, a lot of mess. Why is that? Because every single chain plate in this boat is behind some sort of cabinetry. It takes you as long as it takes to do up five bolts on a chain plate, but for probably five minutes work in bolts, there's probably an hour's work in just getting into in and out of area. But uh, once it's done, it's many, many, many years of trouble-free sailing. So we're gonna walk you through the process of how to install and how it all goes. But look at these chain plates. We're so stoked, they're so beautiful. It's such a shame that they're hidden. It's gonna be pretty hard to show you really in where I'm working. They're very tight spaces. They're very tucked away in behind cabinetry and so on. But just while we've got them out here, pretty much all I'm doing is installing these inside the boat like so with some bolts, putting the washer on and doing the nut up behind. It's a five minute job and they'll all be secured. There's the foundation for our new rig and we're ready to step our mast. Chain plate one. Generally, when you start a job like this, any job on a boat usually gives you another job or if not another three jobs. Before I even start, as you can see here, because there's been water come through, here's our grounding wires. There's our old one and there's one I'm going to replace it with. So you can see these are in pretty poor shape. I'm going to cut that off, strip that back and put a new terminal on there. So most of them are going to need new terminals just so that they're all grounded properly. So before I start with the chain plate, we will just get rid of these. Heavily corroded. You could if you wanted to, you could probably clean them up, but I've just chosen to put some new ones on. So I'll get these on first, then we'll get the chain plate in. What are you doing, Maris? Hey? So all these bolts are snug, they're fitted in beautifully. So to achieve that, there was no measurements on my behalf. I sent Schaefer Marine my chain plates and they mirrored what I'd sent them. So I knew when it come to this part of the install that everything was just gonna fit. So it makes my job really easy. If one of these is out a couple of mil, then it throws the whole lot out, and then you're gonna have not a fun time trying to put all these bolts in, but these are really tight fitting, and they're all snug, they're perfect. Another reason why you don't make them yourself. You get a... Uh... So I'm just gonna put a little bit of thread locker on here. It's the blue locker that I'm using. The red's obviously permanent, the blue is semi-permanent, so if you ever need to pull these chain plates out and give them a polish up or inspect them, uh, it's going to be a lot easier with the blue as opposed to using the red nicely. Lee has also got legendary strength. Look at him go. 
Can you rank the tightness that you're getting those bolts in? I just use the FT on these. I'll let you guys figure that out. <coughs> One down. Lots more to go. Okay, we're on to chain plate number two. Chain this is where it's going. Two. In the shower. Not too bad to access these two. This one was just behind the cupboard. It was alright, we left it all open from when we uninstalled. Same, yeah. same, we're going to replace same. these. They're just rotten. That's rather heavy. Okie dokie, chain plate number two. These are the easy ones. You started off with the easiest? <laughs> yeah, I didn't cut this out either, guys. Oh, just Carol, to clear. Oh, just, just to, to clear, clear that up. up. Oh, we're clearing it up. <laughs> Clear it up. We were all concerned that you made a hell of a job there. Yeah, terrible cutout, but it does get covered by a nice plate. But it wasn't like just no, to, just, just, every, just, just, just so to you let all you know. know. I might be rough, but not that rough. All right, we're on to chain plate number three. Right, number three is Don. Right, number four and five are in turn two. Another big one, last big one. Okay, chain plate number six going in. It's out here, it's behind all this cabinet tree. Okay, we're on chain plate number what, yeah. honey? Come on. Alright, Tay, helping? You're helping daddy? Chain plate number seven, maybe? That one, I actually tapped the... It was pretty tight, so I tapped the bolt through, and then when I put the nut on, it, it gauzed up. I must have bent the thread a bit. I had to get in there with a hacksaw, cut it off, and then start again. I hate to have had to uh, drill all these holes out by hand. <laughs> I've had no problem lining them up. I had one that was a little bit tight and I should have just persevered with it. It's going dreamy because everything is just mirrored of what I pulled out. They cut exactly and drilled the holes exactly what I pulled out. So if I was to try and remeasure this and be like a couple of mil out, it'd be a nightmare trying to get all these in. Next one is in here, which <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in this cupboard. That's Next one was in the cupboard. There's all the clothes that are in that cupboard. Quite a lot of fits in that cupboard. Towels, it's a, like a my hanging clothes slash linen cupboard. And then underneath is least paints, tools, whatever you can fit in there. And a tuner which is not in use. Where's the chain plate? Oh, and you know what? What? We didn't even need to open that up. I thought the chain plate was in there. It's not. Oh my god. It must be in the next bit. Sometimes you forget where you are. So that was all a waste of time. Yeah. Nice. I need to re-screw this anyway. Oh. Here my little screw kit for me, darling. Okay. Ah. Oh, wow. oh. oh, here we go. What have we got here? We're Two in the right chain cupboard. plates. We're in the right cupboard. Two together. Woohoo! Hey honey, that's killing two birds with one stone, right? That's that's what they say. That's a terrible saying. We love a good convenient pull the cupboard apart and get two. Get into another cupboard, pull apart the bathroom. Look at these beautiful precision lines that are sitting in our shower. We are going to be putting them on very soon. It's going to be very exciting. Last three chain plates. Let's go. What's the second last one? It's going in here in our bedroom. It's the back stay. To see what you're doing there, darling. If you could just move out of the way. But keep working. I need you in the shot, but not in the shot, if you know what I mean. This is a hard thing to film, isn't it?
You're doing a great job, babe. All right, another two in there. One more to go. Such a laggy. We're here to disturb your peace. Last job in your room for a while, Bella. How do you feel? Well, I think Bella's room is the most complete. We just got to get this last one in. The last chain plate is going in. This was. This is what it looks like. This is for the stay sale. The last. Ready, Belle? Bella? There you have it. All the chain plates are back where they belong. Now all we have to do is place sealant and screw in the cover plates. All right, we're now. Last one. <laughs> well, last one that we can do. We've got three, four to go, but we've run out of uh, 4,200. That's the last of it, I think. I'll have a look downstairs. But so thanks for joining us that episode, guys. Please like, subscribe, and massive shout out to Schaefer Marine. Our chain plates look incredible. Yeah, Nearly as good as Lee's hair. I don't know about that. <laughs> Close, but... Anyway, we'll see you next time. <laughs> something you might not know about Lee, but once he gets his mindset on something... <laughs> stop until that chain plate is broken. Here we go feel like something's about Ready? to break. Please don't hurt me. Am I safe? <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be on a boat where this is going to happen. Well, I don't know. I was told on um, YouTube that you just polish out the cracks and you don't have to worry about what's inside. I mean, stainless lasts forever, right? What do you think, guys? There's a little bit at the end up there on the list of priorities. You don't want to be at sea when that big blow comes along and you lose a chain plate like that. Either bring your rig down or cause some damage. You don't need that sort of stress out there on the big blue. Take care, take it easy and get yourself some new bloody chain plates. Come on guys, Schaefer Marines, where you'll get them from.